بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. This video is about a long expansion of the Riemann zeta function about one zeta of z is summation n from one to infinity one over n to the z. For this series to converge, the real part of z should be strictly greater than one. The Dirichlet eta function is summation n from one to infinity minus one to the n minus one over n to the z. For convergence, we need the real part of z to be strictly positive. We can write down the eta function in terms of the zeta function. The eta function is an alternating sum. 1 over 1 to the z minus 1 over 2 to the z plus 1 over 3 to the z and so on. We can rewrite every fraction with a plus sign and then subtract double the terms with even positive integers in the denominator. This summation here is the zeta function. From this bracket, if we take 1 over 2 to the z as a common factor, we are left with 1 over 1 to the z plus 1 over 2 to the z plus 1 over 3 to the z. And this is zeta of z again. The eta function is 1 minus 2 to the power 1 minus z times theta of z. This relation here can be used to extend the domain of the zeta function, taking zeta of z to be equal to eta of z divided by 1 minus 2 to the power 1 minus z. On the right-hand side, we can choose any complex z with a real part that is strictly positive. We just need to avoid z being equal to 1, as this gives us 0 in the denominator. If we multiply this ratio by z minus 1, and then take the limit as z tends to 1. We have eta of 1, which is the sum n from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the power n minus 1 divided by n. And this is the natural logarithm of 2. Then we need to take the limit as z tends to 1 of z minus 1 over 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus z. We can apply L'Hopital. This limit is the limit of the ratio of the first derivatives. We have 1 in the numerator. Downstairs, we have 2 to the 1 minus z times the natural logarithm of 2. This limit is 1 over log 2 times log 2, that's 1. The limit of this ratio, which is zeta of z times z minus 1, as z tends to 1, is 1. This means that zeta of z has a simple pole with residue 1 at z equal to 1. We are interested in the power series expansion of zeta of z minus 1 over z minus 1, about 1. We want to write down this difference as summation n from 0 to infinity, coefficient cn times z minus 1 to the power n. This term here can be merged into the sum by starting from n equal to minus 1 and using c of minus 1 equal to 1. c of any integer that is minus 2 or less is equal to 0. The series expansion of eta of z is summation k from 0 to infinity, the kth derivative of eta evaluated at 1, divided by k factorial times z minus 1 to the power k. If k is equal to 0, we are talking about the function eta itself, if k is a positive integer, then that's the kth derivative, which can be obtained via a term-by-term -term differentiation of this summation. The summand here is minus 1 to the n minus 1 times e to the power minus z log n. If we differentiate with respect to z k times, we get this factor here, minus log n raised to the power k. The kth derivative, evaluated at 1, is summation n from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n, minus log n to the power k. We can take minus 1 to the power k outside. We have now to study this summation here. On the next page, we obtain this sum using stageless constants. Gamma n, where n is a non-negative integer, is the limit of this summation here, k from 1 to m, log k to the n divided by k, minus log n to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. It can be shown that this limit exists and is given by the constant gamma n. The summation that we have in our case is very close to this sum. It is just that the sum of interest has terms with alternating sign. This sum converges. The limit as v tends to infinity of log v to the power k divided by v is equal to 0. For every non-negative integer k, log v to the power k divided by v is eventually decreasing. Because we have convergence, then the partial sums, whether we stop at 2n which is even, or 2n plus 1, which is odd, both partial sums converge to the same limit as this summation. We will exploit this fact by taking this sum here with an even number of terms. We will then take the limit as n tends to infinity to get the value of the sum of interest. Recall that we are interested in this sum because the power series expansion of the eta function has the kth derivative of the eta function evaluated at 1, and the kth derivative evaluated at 1 is minus 1 to the power k times this sum here. The first step is to do something like what I did to establish the connection between the eta function and the zeta function. We can write down this summation as a sum 
in which there are no negative terms, then I need to subtract double the sum of the even indexed terms. So this summation here is equal to this sum without minus one to the B minus one, minus two times summation V from one to N, then the summand is this term here with V replaced by two V. Log two V is log two plus log V. We can expand this power here, summation G from zero to K, K choose J, log two to the power K minus J times log V to the power G. From this sum, I subtract log 2n to the power k plus 1 divided by k plus 1. This term is not in the original expression, so I need to add it here. The motivation is the prior knowledge that this difference here converges as n tends to infinity. Specifically, it converges to gamma k, the eighth stageless constant. In this part, let's interchange the order of summation. Now the outer sum is g from 0 to k. k choose j log 2 to the power k minus j. Then we have the inner sum v from 1 to n, log v to the power g divided by v. Let's add and subtract log n to the power j plus 1 over j plus 1. The idea is that as n tends to infinity, this difference here converges to the jth stageless constant. Because of this extra term, we need also to think about this summation. g from 0 to k, k choose j log 2 to the k minus j times log n to the j plus 1 over j plus 1. We can write down this log 2 to the k minus j as log 2 to the power k plus 1 divided by log 2 to the power j plus 1. Log 2 to the k plus 1 can be taken outside the sum. This term here is combined with log n. We have now log n over log 2 all to the power j plus 1. And we have this j plus 1 in the denominator. If we call this term z, then this is summation j from 0 to k. k choose j z to the j plus 1 over j plus 1. This ratio can be written as the integral of t to the j from 0 to z, we have a finite sum. We can interchange summation and integration. Now the sum is j from 0 to k. k choose j t to the j. This is 1 plus t all to the power k. Integrating, we get 1 plus t to the k plus 1 over k plus 1. Using the limits of integration, we get 1 plus z to the k plus 1 minus 1 over k plus 1. Recall that this z here is log n over log 2. The summation is log 2 to the k plus 1 times 1 plus log n over log 2 all to the power k plus 1. When these two terms are multiplied, we get log 2 plus log n to the power k plus 1. And this is log 2n to the power k plus 1 minus log 2 to the power k plus 1. Then we divide by k plus 1. This difference is here. We have this summation multiplied by minus 1. It is equal to log 2 to the power k plus 1 over k plus 1 minus log 2n to the k plus 1 over k plus 1. This term and that term cancel. Here is the remaining term. Then we have minus the sum that includes these differences. And we can take the limit. This difference is gamma k. Here is this term. We have a finite number of terms. We can take the limit term by term. When we take the limit, this becomes gamma g. In this summation, change j to k minus g. The sum is also from 0 to k. k choose k minus g is equal to k choose j. There is no problem here log 2 to the k minus g becomes log 2 to the g, gamma g becomes gamma k minus g. In this summation, if g is equal to 0, we have k choose 0, that's 1, log 2 to the 0, that's 1, and we get gamma k minus 0, that's gamma k. There is a minus sign here, so we can discard this gamma k and start our summation from g equal to 1. This is the series now obtained as a finite sum that depends on stageless constants. We have a formula for the kth derivative of the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 1, this is just the sum multiplied by minus 1 to the power k. Eta of z is equal to zeta of z times 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus z. Eta of z has this series expansion. This bracket here is the kth derivative of eta evaluated at 1. Zeta of z can be written as this summation here, which is 1 over z minus 1 plus this power series. We can also write down this term as a power series. This is 1 minus e to the power 1 minus z log 2. We can use the series expansion of the exponential this is summation m from 0 to infinity. 1 minus z log 2 raised to the power m divided by m factorial. When m is equal to 0, we have 1 here, which goes away with that one. We are left with minus the summation starting from 1, minus 1 to the m, z minus 1 to the m. These two guys together are 1 minus z to the power m, log 2 to the power m. Downstairs, we have the factorial of m. This power series for the Dirichlet eta function is equal to the product of this series and that series. 
we are interested in those coefficients. On the left-hand side, z minus 1 to the power k is multiplied by this sum times minus 1 to the k over k factorial. When we multiply these two sums, we have z minus 1 to the power m plus j. The coefficient of z minus 1 to the k is minus summation m from 1 to infinity, j from minus 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the m, log 2 to the m over m factorial. And from here, we have cj. We need the constraint that m plus j is equal to k. This allows us to write the double sum as a single sum. From here, j can be replaced by k minus m. Those coefficients are equal to 0 when k minus m is less than or equal to minus 2. When the index m is k plus 2 or more, this sum is equal to 0. We can stop the sum at k plus 1. Separate from this sum, the term corresponding to small m equal to k plus 1. We have this term here, and the sum is from 1 to k. What about the left-hand side? We have obtained it on the previous page. If we multiply by minus 1 to the k divided by k factorial, we have minus 1 to the k log 2 to the k plus 1. k plus 1 times k factorial is k plus 1 factorial. Note that this term is exactly like this one here. Write down the binomial coefficient in terms of factorials. We have k factorial over m factorial, k minus m factorial. This k factorial goes away with that k factorial. We have these two guys. Here is m factorial and here is k minus m factorial. Rewrite this minus 1 to the power k as minus 1 to the m times minus 1 to the k minus m. By comparing these two sums, we obtain that c k minus m is equal to gamma k minus m minus 1 to the k minus m over k minus m factorial, which means that for every non-negative integer n, cn is equal to gamma n minus 1 to the power n over n factorial.